Okay, so this is going to be an introduction to the 11 rig as well as just kind of a project setup um, video. So first thing is I, I provided a couple of files in the, uh, we've got 11 rig.ma and we have a source images. So to get that set up, you'll want to open up a new Maya scene, go to project window, click new and name it whatever you want. So you create all these folders. Once you have that, then you can copy the files that you downloaded. Um, you want that 11rig.ma into the scene folder and the textures into the source images folder. So once you have all of that, um, from here on out, whenever you want to open this up, you'll open up Maya and say Maya set project and set it to the project that you named. So in my case, character animation demo, click set. Okay, once you have that, uh, you can hit Command O to open, and then you can open up the 11 rig uh, scene. So this is a rig, it's a free rig, it's, a, it's an older rig, and it's from the um, 11 Second Club website. So 11 Second Club is a month, monthly character animation competition where they give you 11 seconds of audio from a random piece of media, and then you uh, animate a scene to that. Uh, so, but uh, the website also provides, if you go to resources, some rigs that you can download. Uh, and so this is the 11 rig. Uh, I downloaded it and then did some modifications because it was a little bit sloppy just because it's an, made on an older version of Maya. So I cleaned that up a little bit. Um, when I open it up, it will say it contains mental ray nodes. You can just click OK. Actually, I should have checked that box to say it doesn't show that again. Um, but here's the 11 rig. All right. Uh, it's got some basic controls. I did put the face controls on their own layer so you can hide them and show them that way. There is another way to do that um, which I'll cover momentarily. Alright, so uh, the rig is really good for a number of reasons. Um, the first of which is that it is very uh, customizable. So here's the default that I have set uh, but if we click this root bone here it's, it's called global scale. It's just this kind of raindrop shape. Um, in the channel box layer editor we've got a bunch of different um, controls not just translate and rotate we have a global scale and so if you highlight that and we'll click and drag you can see the whole thing gets bigger and smaller. Um, torso deformer visibility so all the deformer visibilities so if we set this to one you can see we get more controls. Um, you can probably leave those at zero for, for most of our purposes. Um, and then we've got some more rig visibilities. So let's say like we've got this face control visibility. If I set that to zero, that'll hide all of the face controls. All right, it's similar to what I did with the layers. It's slightly different because I was sloppy with my selection. But um, so you can hide and, and, and show things that way. And then as we scroll down more, uh, we've got IK and FK spaces. I'm going to leave those at global. Um, and then we've got from gender on down, we have um, ways to con customize the model. So if I just hide the controls here, uh, again, I have that root bone selected, so I've got all of these controls. Um, now we can adjust this model however we want. So we can change it to female. So I'm just selecting the words and then middle clicking and dragging. Um, we can adjust, you know, and just play around with, of course, the way that I have it. Got to go to female and then you can adjust the female controls. So if you want to do female character, you're obviously more than welcome to do that. Um, you can also adjust individual parts of the body. And so like right now I have the arms set to mostly buff. You can go real extreme with it. You can also turn that off and you can go fatter arms um, or you can go really skinny arms. Okay, so you can kind of customize this however you want. And same thing for different sections of the body. Um, there's also a smoothness set which is currently set at 2. If you find that the, that the scene is not playing back very fast, it's not playing back real time, you can adjust this from 2. Uh, you can go to 1 or you can go all the way down to 0. You will notice that some of the textures get kind of screwy. Uh, as you change that. 
but all you have to do to fix that is just go back into uh, um, into the mesh and just reassign the textures. I wouldn't worry about that until you're ready to render because it might get screwed up multiple times anyway. Um, but that's how you can customize the body. If you really want to, well, this third layer here says do not touch. And generally, I would heed that advice. But if you need to get into the mesh, just turn off the reference layer so you can actually select it. And then you can see here is the mesh. Uh, this is an unwrapped mesh. So if you want to make this look more like a superhero and give him maybe a chest emblem of some sort, uh, you can do that. You know, you can export these UVs into Photoshop and, and kind of modify however you want. Um, so yeah, those options exist. Oops, I'm going to leave that on reference. And I'm going to leave the, uh, the body smooth on two just because it looks better. So those are the, the kind of the body proportions that you can adjust as you see fit. I'll go back to like 7.4 there. Okay. Um, if you select the head bone, the head control, which is right here, okay, it's the one that circles the whole head. Then we've got some more customization options. So this is where you can adjust, uh, you can adjust the head scale. So right now you see the head is, is not an accurate proportion. It's a stylized proportion. Um, but you can adjust that if you want. If you want to go, I wouldn't go huge. Um, but if you want to go maybe a little bit more realistic, whoops, you can go to like 0.9, right, or 0.8. Um, with superhero proportions, I think the head tends to be a little bit smaller than the rest of the body, so it kind of helps to accentuate that. Uh, leave that at one for now. You have a... a T a choice of three hairstyles, well, two hairstyles and one no hair. So you can go the generic boy haircut, girl, or none. Um, I mean, it's called boy and girl, but it doesn't really matter. But you've got those options. Uh, you've got some eyebrow styles you can play with. you got three of those. You've got uh, a mustache style. you got Tom Selleck. Uh, closer to John Waters, and then it's called the Chaplain. This looks like another mustache, and I would rather not see any of that. There's just no need to approach it. And then none is also an option. Um, beard style, it says goatee. Really, you get the soul patch or nothing. And then you get smoothness for the face. And you can adjust the eye color. Um, the eyes aren't currently showing, and we can fix that here in a moment. Um, so definitely before you start really getting into the animation, I encourage you just to poke around, play with all the controls, see what they do. Um, the rig is set up for the feet to be IK, inverse kinematics, right? So you select the foot bone, and then as you move it around, you can see that the leg follows. Um, it does have these knee controls, so you can, uh, you know, make sure that knee is pointing wherever you want it to. The arms, by default, uh, and with buff arms, you can't really see the bones, um, but the arms, by default, are FK. So you can kind of rotate them down this way and kind of animate them that way. Now, you can uh, change that. So if you want to go with IK, you just select this hand control here, and... Just kidding, it's not the hand. It is, I can't remember where they put the bone, the control. Uh, da, da, da. Right here. Um, if you select the root bone, we can change the arms where it says IK blend. We set those to zero. You can see the bones change and now Select that bone, uh, and now the arm will follow the hand. Okay, so whichever way um, you want to go, you can do. The other thing that you can do is you can incorporate some stretch if you would like. 
So if we grab, for instance, the foot, um, we got auto stretch. If you set that to one, now if we grab that foot and move it, that foot can stretch out further than would be you know physically possible. This is great for for doing some kind of exaggerated, almost like smear frame sort of animation stuff. Um, that would be just really quick things to add some accentuation, some um, to the poses. So. You do have those controls. You can switch between uh, FK and IK, which is great. Uh, you can also be specific about where the, the leg stretch. Uh, you've got similar to controls to that walker rig that we uh, dealt with, where we've got foot roll, toe lift, all right, toe wiggle, if you want to wiggle the toe. Spin at various points. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. We also have... Um, up on the face, we've got an eye look. So this, as you move this bone, that's where the eyes are going to point. So they move it left to right. All right, you can see how that works. Um, we've got some simplified face controls. This is about as simple as, as you get with still getting face uh, controls. We've got teeth control. We've got a jaw down here, so we can lower the jaw if we want. Um, we can move the we can move the corners of the mouth around. Um, you can see we've got a few different custom controls for you, for these bones too. So every time you select a bone, just take a look at the custom controls and see what, what additional options that you have. The last kind of control thing that I want to point out with this rig is about the fingers. Uh, there aren't any direct finger controls. I mean, you can select these bones, but you can't actually move them. They're just there so you can select the controls. You do all the actual animation on this particular rig through the channel box, and you can see that we have curl, curl one, curl two, curl three, and these refer to the, the joints of the finger. Um, you can also select the whole hand, and then we can do you know open and close, scrunch, thumb scrunch. Um, and so this is how you'll you'll animate those fingers like that. Also, you can adjust the hand scale. Um, that's kind of the, the quick and dirty of the controls. You can see the hips there. Um, and as it stands right now, the hips just kind of move on their own, and the feet generally stay put. And you can see the upper body does as well. Um, you can uh, adjust the you know, how all of that performs by adjusting the um, IK and FK space, but we're not really going to deal with that. I think we're going to try to keep it pretty simple and just focus on uh, the poses. So that's kind of the, the, the quick on the controls. Uh, the last thing I just want to talk about is getting this character to look a little bit better. You can see that if you hit six on the number pad, um, actually it loaded automatically with the exception of the eyes. Um, if these don't load automatically, uh, one, make sure you set your project and that you've got the texture saved in the source images folder. But otherwise, you can go to like skin body um, and go to the, if we graph the network, let's click on that uh, texture node and you can navigate to that to reload that file. Um, if the eyes aren't really working, and you can see the there's pupils now. Where is it? The eye shader. Um, if you just click on that in the hypershade, that tends to kick it into gear and reload that texture. So once I clicked on that, it just kind of refreshed. And now we can sort through those those eye colors and change them however we want. Okay. And so now we've got uh, everything kind of set up. So that's the, the quick overview of the rig. Um, the last little thing that I want to cover before we get into posing, uh, which on the internet will be the next video, is how to kind of keep this one, keep this file and then work in a, a secondary kind of version. We're going to reference this file. So to do that, 
Um, we're just going to do a new scene. And then we're going to go to File, Reference, uh, Create Reference. And then we can click on the original rig scene, click Reference. And that's going to import that. Um, and the way that this is going to work, I'm going to not show that again. Uh, the way that this is going to work is it's like a... I mean, reference is a good word, but it's it's kind of like an instance of that original. Is it's it's referring to it. It's not actually bringing that data into this file. It's leaving it in its own file. So if you adjust the original, it's going to update in this scene. And that's a way that you can work on larger scale projects with a bigger team, where you've got one person who has like the whole scene, and then one person is kind of doing the final tweaks on a character. The other person is adjusting, you know, props and and whatnot, um, all of that. Referencing is, is one, it kind of keeps that original pristine. Um, but if you wanted to add, add multiple characters, you can do that. So we've got this guy, and I'll kind of move him off to the side. And then I can reference another one. Okay, Refer ref referencing that same file. Okay, it's going to take a second to load in. There we go. So now here's my second one. Um, but I can still modify it. So I can still select this root bone. Um, and maybe I want, uh, we'll just set the arm buff to zero, and the belly buff to zero, and the hips buff to zero, and the legs to zero. All right, maybe we want this to be female, so we can adjust that. Um, right, and then we'll probably get rid of that mustache. Get rid of the beard. Okay, there we go. Uh, the eyes aren't uh, aren't updating, but we can go into our hypershade again. Um, you can see it it imports um, instances of each material, so you can still customize those material independently. You still have plenty of flexibility uh, here. Uh, we just need to get these eye shaders to load. Kind of. Let's click those eyes and figure that part out. So if we go to our rig here, look at our materials. Here, let me turn off the uh, controls. Oh, no, that's not going to do it. Just select the eye. It gets a little jagged with the smoothing of the eye. Um, it's kind of a minor flaw in the rig. Um, but that's okay. It's not super noticeable. Uh, I just need to get the material figured out. So it's eye shader. Right here, and we'll just go through and reload I1. So 11, open that, open that, and it should, there we go. Now the eyes. So it's just reselecting that, reloading the texture, and we're good. Um, and again, you can you can adjust those shaders as well. That As you bring in multiple rigs, the second rig has a 1 at the end of it, so we've got 11 rig and 11 rig 1. Um, so how you can differentiate between the two. Uh, and then if you want to adjust, for instance, uh, let's see, where is, we'll say like the pants color, you can just select that and change that material. We'll say we want to go with, I don't know, more tan pants. You can do that, and it, it keeps it independent. So you've got some, some pretty good flexibility uh, there.